Okay. So we'll try and take us through all the, the answers to the homework. So we start with uh, 21D, and we start with question 3, 5, 21. Uh, question 3, so be prepared to answer a question if I ask you uh, about um, how you did this. Uh, maybe Malika, can you give us, what's your, what would you get as the final, um, final answer to this one? As the, like, I got a point. Yeah. I got negative 8 and negative 19. Okay, does anyone disagree with that? Um, no. No. No? Okay, well then, uh, yeah, we're all good in that one, so I won't bother doing that one. Um, uh, I will do question five, just, uh, just to get one on the board. Okay, so we are given a derivative. That's equal to this x to be squared. We know that the original curve passes through, uh, uh, passes through, um, doesn't equal, but passes through to zero. So that's the information that'll get rid of our um, constant integration. All right, so uh, perhaps if you want to integrate this, you should rearrange it. We know that y will be equal to the anti uh, differentiation of this. So let's just rearrange it first. Uh, it'll be x and then minus 5 times 1 minus x to the minus 2. And that's all to dx. That's how you would write it. Okay, so we can integrate this. We have the weapons to be able to integrate this. So we know how to integrate x and that would be uh, x squared over 2. Uh, now let's think about this. Uh, that's a constant, so it's just going to be 5 minus 5 times whatever the integration of this is going to be. Now, this is your one, 1 over a, so you can write, so a, the coefficient here, is going to be minus 1 of x. So it's 1 over minus 1 if you want. I'll just, it'll help you get the signs right. And that's going to be multiplied by uh, the original bracket. So this is one of these ax plus b questions, although it's written the other way around, so I presume you recognize that. Um, add 1 to the power, and then divide down by minus 1. Uh, and that's then plus c. Okay, so that was a long way of doing it. You probably did it shorter than that, but let's just tidy up this mess here. So you get x squared over 2 is equal to, well, um, this to the power of minus 1 will go back down below. So that's going to be 1 minus x below the line again. And then I think with all these minuses and everything, I think you end up with just that. Um, correct me if you didn't get that or, or tell me. I think that's, that's what I got anyway. Okay, and this is our original function, which is great. We know it passes through to 0, so we can use that fact to find out what c is. Subbing in uh, 2 and 0, we get c. So uh, perhaps, uh, Badai, did you get an answer for c for this one? Yeah, um, c is equal to negative 7. Uh, I would be in agreement with that. So unless someone else got a different answer, work this all out and you get c is equal to negative 7. And therefore, uh, you would finish your uh, question by giving the actual x squared over 2 minus 5, 1 minus x, which you figured out up here, minus 7. Okay, and that's the answer to question 5. Uh, question 22 was a bit messy, I think. Um, I'll go through it. Um, perhaps, Rigel, you can give me your constant. What did you get as a constant at the end? For 22? Yeah. Um, you got... Uh, wait. I got C equals B minus 1. 2 uh, minus 2 ln of 2. Okay. Uh, Malika, what did you get for that one? I just got what Rigel said, but does it matter, like, what order you put it in? It's fine, right? As in, you have 2 ln 2 minus 2? No, I did the... No, I think it's fine. Yeah, it should be. Well, if it's, yeah, perhaps you have, uh, uh, 
yeah, the other way around should be okay. If you have minus two LN2 plus two, it should be fine, yeah. Well, let's just uh, go through it very briefly then. Very similar process. We'll skip out that middle line that I put in the last time. Uh, we are looking to integrate this. So that's going to be to the power of minus one. Uh, uh, and well, no, it wouldn't. It's one over, well, it is to the power of minus one, but that's uh, natural log, isn't it? So this is two x squared over two. So that's just going to be x squared. Uh, I think you end up with plus ln absolute value, one minus x, because it can't be negative, uh, plus c. Now I can go through that step if you need me to, just shout. Otherwise, um, uh, we have that now, so we're going to use our bit of information here, f of minus 1 equals 3. So when we sub in minus 1 into this, we get minus 1 squared plus 2, and then 1 minus minus 1 plus c equals 3. Working, uh, well, we can't do very much with that. That's 2 ln 2, as Rigel and Malika said, and 1 plus from here. Plus c is equal to 3. A little bit of rearranging, and you do get c equal to what Rigel said. 2 minus 2 ln 2. Okay, and that's correct. And then you can rewrite the function uh, with that in here. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the ax plus b type, the function within a function. And remember, that's a, usually a 1 over a times and etc. So hopefully you have grasped that, and it seems you have partial fractions. Wait, yes. Um, I was a bit confused why the the integral of one over one minus x is equal to uh, uh, minus two. Like I understand it's ln one minus x, but why is it uh, negative two ln one minus two one minus x? Why is this is positive? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. You're in, you want to know why it went from minus to plus? No, I don't know why it went from a, uh, um, like, the fraction into uh, into this. Yeah, the absolute value at least. Uh, that's by rule. So you'll see that in your um, in your book um, and in the uh, any formula you'll see with this because you can't get a negative there. The absolute value uh, will save you from that. So you can see it here. Where is it? So one over a function that has a coefficient, uh, or sorry, a, an x power of just one will turn to ln ax plus b. But it has to be absolute value because we can't get the ln of a negative. Okay, and it's the being in. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. So that's a rule. So uh, perhaps you had it in just normal brackets. Just remember for for that you have to do absolute value brackets. All right. Just pretty much, um, yeah, to save yourself from getting a negative answer in there, which wouldn't make sense. Okay, so question, the next question, so this is on 1D, was uh, bringing in partial fractions into it, because partial fractions we, we did come across in the first unit, which is a number unit. Uh, like, I'm surprised you, you didn't do that in uh, this, but uh, it's okay, we'll do it now. Um, okay, so write this as a sum of partial fractions is the first thing. Okay, so I will. A well, sum of partial fractions is about thinking of the quadratic here and splitting it up into two ways. Um, uh, so you can split apart the top as well and then add them together. So uh, can I think of a simple example? It's like undoing a common denominator. And you have a common denominator and you want to undo that and add them together. Okay, so let's factorize. First of all, get the denominator and factorize. So x squared minus two x minus three. So we can factorize that. So that should be uh, pretty straightforward. X and x here, a three and a one multiply to give three and I need to make two in the middle. So I'm going to have a, min a minus 2 in the middle, so a minus 3 plus 1. Okay, so this now can be rewritten as x minus 9 all over x plus 1, x minus 3. So that's the same thing. Now my idea is I'm going to split these two apart and see what happens with the um, uh, numerator. 
because the reason for this in integration is because at the moment um, and even later on uh, integrating this is very difficult but if we can split it up into two easier problems as in look at this this is an ax plus b and an ax plus b there's no longer an x squared if we can split it up into that we can then in integrate it but we don't know what so we don't know what's going to be on top of these fractions so we call this a over x plus one uh, plus some b over x minus three we don't know what they are but we do know that whatever it is is going to be equivalent to that but we need to find a and b that's the whole point of this okay so what can i Sorry. do yeah why wouldn't you make it like minus why because would you put, why would you put minus, minus there yeah good yeah question. Yeah, it, we're, it's not going to be x minus 9. And even if b is negative, that's fine. We'll find out b is negative, and then it should have been a minus. We just presume plus because it's going to be easier. Yeah. It might more than likely be, and I think b does end up to be a negative number, and then when you rewrite it at the end, you'll change that to a minus. Because b is just some integer, and so is a, some integer, positive or negative. We're not sure which is which. The same way we could start off this sentence with minus a, plus three, uh, minus b, we could do that. We don't know what a and b are, and that's what we're gonna try and find. Okay, so we know that these two lines are equivalent. So um, let's do like a common denominator here. If we wanna put these back with a common denominator, common denominator would be the same as this side. So I can put in that step if I want. But generally, you leave out the step I'm writing at the moment. So I'm going to put these a and b over a common denominator of x plus 1, x minus 3. And then, so if this one now has an x minus 3, I need to multiply the a by x minus 3. And the b now needs to be multiplied by that. So it's kind of the same as when you add fractions. All right. But what I do know now is that the top of this, the numerator of the left-hand side, equals the numerator of the right-hand side because the denominators are the same. So let's deal with that. So now I know that x minus 9, taking numerator only, equals, well, let's multiply this out, um, uh, ax minus 3a plus bx uh, plus b. Okay, so I just multiply the a and b. Now what I do know that left-hand side has to equal right-hand side. So in other words, this uh, x ax plus b must equal each other. So if I just take the x's aside and say, well, I know that then a plus b has to equal whatever the coefficient here is, and it's 1. It has to equal that. And then I do the same on the other side and with the other thing. Minus 9 equals negative 3a plus b. So it's taking the numbers approach, these three. And now I have two equations. Simultaneously, I can solve them. How did you just do that, though, sir? How did I do that? Well, I know that the x terms must equal the x terms. The x's must all equal each other. They will not be influenced by the normal numbers or the constants, if you will. They won't be influenced by that. So, in other words, a plus bx has to equal 1. How do you know that a plus b is equal to 1, though? How do I know a plus b? Well, a plus b, a plus bx over this side, must be equal to the same coefficient as we've got on the left-hand side. And the coefficient of x here is 1. So if you want, you're split up into two equations. You're doing the x's, a plus b, and then you do the other ones. Don't have a different color. but you, So minus 9 is equal to negative 3a plus b. They have to be equal to each other, and there's no influence between the x's and, and the constants. All right. So simultaneous equations, we should be able to solve quite easily, and therefore I'm not going to spend much time on it. Uh, let's multiply this one by minus one. So the b's will cancel, and we're left with negative 10b is equal to negative 4a. That means a is going to be something 5 over 2, isn't it? And if a is 5 over 2, Judging from this first one, b has to be, you've got to subtract 3 over 2 from that. So b is negative uh, 3 over 2. Okay, so b was negative, Malachi. You, 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 your instincts were correct. 
Uh, okay, so that's A and B done. Right, so how do I write that then? Uh, substitute back in for A and B, and then I've written it as a partial fractions. Okay, so my new thing is it's going to be 5 over 2 times x plus 1 minus, because b was minus, 3 over 2 times x minus 3. And now I've written my original, my original thing as uh, this has then become these two partial fractions. And part b of this is uh, asking me to integrate. So I'm going to integrate this. Um, but uh, I, it asks to integrate this, but I can't integrate this because I don't have the weapons, but I do have the weapons to integrate this. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to just go straight into part B and integrate it. Integrate this all with respect to x. So we should be able to do this now. Uh, 5 over 2 is a constant, so it's going to multiply. So that's 1 over x, uh, x plus 1. So that's back to our natural log because there's no, um, no power here. So that's okay. And, and the same thing, minus 3 over 2 x minus 3 plus a c that we don't know. Same thing uh, on that one. So right. sir, doesn't, isn't there supposed to be a denominator? Or is it all just being divided by 1? Denominator where? Here? Sorry, this should be a lawn there as well. I'm sick. This goes back to the same, the same job here. Uh, the, same, the same one. There is the Sorry, frac I'm... same one. Okay. So there is no fraction. The integral doesn't have a fraction, no. Okay. No. Why does it, hmm? does it have a ln in front of it? Yeah, it's a really small oh, ln because okay. I forgot to write it in. Yeah, my bad. Okay, so we'll do the second one as well because, you know, practice makes perfect. But I do, am I, uh, Rigel, did you get that one? Uh, yes, I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, so I, d I do imagine, Badai and Malika, you should, you should go over this section and do one or two more. Um, yeah, I just didn't get six, because it had A, B, and C. Yeah. Uh, okay, so question six, then, is this thing. So it's got a quadratic on top, which already looks horrible. X plus three times X minus one squared. And it says, uh, right, as some partial fractions, and it, give us, it gives us the form. And so that's, that's the key here. It, you don't have to factorize beyond, you don't have to factorize the bottom. X minus one tells us what to put as the fractions plus C times X minus one squared. Now what I do notice in this one is that if I multiply these three together, I get too much, don't I? Perhaps you notice that. But they've told us to do it, so I'm gonna do it. That equals that. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do the same thing as I did the last time. The common denominator, the lowest common denominator is this. Isn't it? Because it isn't always, you know, if you're adding fractions and you have uh, a quarter plus a sixth plus a twelfth, uh, you're, you don't always multiply 12 times 6 times 4 to get the common denominator. Sometimes, uh, you know, 6 is multiplied by itself twice, uh, not twice here, but you get the idea. 3 times 4 is 2 times 6 is included in that one. So you don't need the common denominator here is 12. So you don't need to multiply everything. Same in this one. The common denominator... You don't need to include this in the common denominator because it's already here twice. Yeah, so that's why I got confused because um, the denominators, they don't kind of add up in mm. the right-hand side and the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side, I did for C, I said uh, X minus 1 on the numerator as well. Yeah, you, you may have to. So this is my common denominator of these. Uh, sorry, I did that wrong. Uh, don't need that. I just said we don't need that. So I want to make it the same as this. Because if that's the same as that, then I can equate the numerators. 
So I still have x plus 3 over x minus 1 squared. Same way, we, we can say if, uh, I'll just take it down here. If something is over 24, uh, we cannot say that, that a equals b here. But if they're both over the same denominator, a does equal b. I'm a bit off screen, but you get the idea. Uh, we have to have the same denominator either side. You could work it around here, and I think that's what you did, right, Joel? You multiplied this by the... Uh, yeah, but I, didn't get the, I don't think I got the right answer. It sh yeah, it still should work out. There's many ways to do this. All right, but let's, let's do... So this side, I'm going to keep the same. This side now, I've got to make sure that I've multiplied. A is going to be multiplied by x minus 1 squared, because it doesn't have 8 as part of its denominator. Plus, what's B? What's B missing? Well, B is missing an X plus 3 and one of these X minus 1s. X minus 1. Oops, minus, not plus. And C then, and I ran out of space again, is missing uh, just an X plus 3 because it's got both of these already in its denominator. Okay, so I didn't run out of space. Now, you can see what's going to happen here. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. The denominators are the same. So let's just talk about the numerators again. Okay, numerator here. If I multiply out this numerator, we're going to get x squared terms, x terms, and constant terms. And on this side, we have x squared terms, x terms, and constant terms. And they must equal each other, same as the last question. So let's multiply out. Uh, this could take a while, but uh, that's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. Uh, this is going to be x squared plus 2x minus 3. So why don't you keep them in your factored out form so you can get rid of them later? Yeah, possibly could have done that. I've just done this instinctively jumped into... Might as well continue. You can possibly do that if you're doing your correction now. You can do no, it. yeah, I did it wrong. I multiplied, like, when A at the top, I multiplied by both of the denominators from B and C. Oh, okay. I did that for everything. Oh, yeah, you messed it up then, yeah. All right, now I've expanded that. Perhaps, as Roger said, I didn't need to because they're factored, but that's okay. Uh, X squared terms, I'm just going to do here. X squared terms, X terms, constants. 6x squared is equal to ax squared plus bx squared. So 6 is equal to a plus b. a plus b on this side must equal that 6. x terms 1 is equal to minus 2a plus 2b plus c. And the constant terms negative 19 is equal to Oh, uh, negative 19 is equal to a minus 3b from here, plus 3c. And I think perhaps Raj's method was a bit, uh, was a bit quicker and better, but that's okay. Uh, uh, so this is going to be, uh, there's three equations, there's three unknowns. You'd have to do it by substitution. Um, I presume you can solve three equations, three unknowns. Perhaps not. Is everybody okay? Do you want? Is anyone? Do you want me to do the three equations, three unknowns? How to do it? But I was like, yep. So it's just substitution. So you rearrange them. So, for instance, this one, um, you know that a is equal to b minus six from this one. And then for you can put that uh, in for both these B's, or both these A's. And then that gives you two equations, two unknowns, and you can solve for B and C uh, with that. So either, well, maybe I'll do it just uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, two times, now B minus 6 plus 2B plus C, and I'm going to put it to this one as well. Minus 19 oh, equals... Uh, B minus 6 minus 3B plus 3C. Uh, combine 
everything together and form two equations out here. I'm only going to do this for B because it's going to take a while. Um, or B or C, depending on which one I want to do. That gives 1 is equal to negative 2B plus a 2B. Oh, there we go. That's, 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 that's nice. Um, uh, plus 12. Hopefully you're following there. These Bs are actually going to cancel each other out. So that's uh, generous of us. Uh, generous of them, and then we just have a plus C. So C, uh, is that 12? Uh, I may have made a mistake somewhere here, but 2B minus 6. C, C seems to be negative 11. Seems to be. Uh, perhaps you guys can finish that. I haven't done this one already, and it's uh, long to finish. C seems to be negative 11. There's a possibility I've made a mistake here. Minus 2a, minus 2a, plus 2b. Could have made a mistake. That's not the answer that you'll find at the back of the book. It says c is negative 3. Uh, so I don't have... Uh, I've obviously made a mistake with signs somewhere. Uh, but that's the method anyway. And then it's the same thing when you go to integrate it. So you should have c from the back of the book. Uh, C is negative 3, A is 2, and B is 4. So maybe you can give that one a go again. And I'll set that as homework, and then I'll try it again and make sure I can get it right. Uh, there is an easier way of, of uh, solving these, but it should have worked for me, but apparently it didn't. Okay. Oh, I see why. Look. Minus plus 3... No, it should be plus 2b, minus 3. Ah, I'll leave it. Hopefully you know the method. Maybe I'm going to set a couple of these partial fractions for homework, and you can get onto those. All right. Uh, but the finish of it is the same. It's just going to be a load of lawns, uh, natural logs. All right, let's move along. Uh, so uh, let's get do some of the substitution questions. So. Uh, integration by substitution, so 5b, we had, the first one we, we had, what was it, uh, integrate 2x over root x squared plus 3 uh, dx, and that was the first one I think you guys had to do. Uh, first thing I do here is, is make it into a product, so it's 2x times x squared plus 3 to the minus a half, I think. Dx. Now the sh the um, the sharp-eyed among us will notice, and this is what you're looking for in the substitution method, that the derivative of this is 2x. So therefore, that's the thing I'll call u. Okay. So substitution, you need to call something u. As soon as you call something u, get the derivative of it. and then find out what the du equivalent is. So du, and we did this on last Wednesday, and perhaps you remember it, is 2x dx. Now that's convenient, because look, 2x dx, that can be replaced with du, and this bit can be replaced with u. So all we got. So we've substituted in a new variable, we've called it u. It's u now to the negative a half, that's this bit, and 2x dx is du. So now we've got only one variable, we've no longer any x's, we've substituted everything, and we can now integrate. So integrating this, okay, we'll do it by rule, add one to the power, so that becomes a half, divide down by the new power, so dividing by a half, so that's multiplying by, multiplying by two, uh, plus our c, like that. Uh, uh, that's the square root of u, what was u? x squared plus 3, so we'll put that back in, the square root of x squared plus 3, plus is still an indefinite integral, we don't know what the constant is, and they haven't asked us to find it yet. And that is the answer to 5b. Uh, okay, uh, 6, 6b, uh, Bidai, did you get an answer for 6b? Uh, yes, is it 20... We're on 21F, uh, right? Uh, 20, but I don't know. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. yeah. 
six B. Yeah. Uh, I got e x squared plus six plus c. E x squared plus c, Rigel. Uh, yeah, that's what I got as well. Okay, I'm like you. You didn't get around to it. Okay. Uh, all right, we won't do that one, but I will do question seven c. Uh, I think six c was pretty. or b is pretty straightforward. Uh, so we had x over two minus x squared dx. Okay, looking at this, I think this is substitutable because my differentiation of it is going to lead to, well, not exactly what I want, but it's going to be close. It's going to just be something x. So let's let it equal to 2 minus x squared. Straight away, I get the derivative, du dx, and that's minus 2x. And that means du is equal to minus 2x dx. Now that's not what we have here, but let's just take this stage by stage. Now we've got, let's bring the x aside for a second. We got one over u and that's times x dx. Now I want it times x dx, not minus two x dx. So what do I must do to this du? If I divide both sides by minus two here, that's x dx. So my x dx, which is what I want to replace, substitute, is, well, a half of du or minus a half of du like that. You can write like that. Hopefully that made sense. So this can substitute in for that now. So I did an extra line there, but that's okay. Uh, times minus a half du. Okay. Now I've substituted. Perhaps I can write this uh, with the minus half out front, and maybe I will. Because if it's a constant, it's multiplying, there's no point in getting it involved in the creation process, it's just going to multiply again afterwards. Okay. All right, one over u then is our favorite ln absolute value u. Uh, that minus a half is still there, plus c. Replace that u with what you got, or what you called it at the start. So we've got a half. Telling you 2 minus x squared plus c. And that is question 7b. Rigel, Badai, you both got that? Yep. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, part uh, 8b then. Um, Badai, what answer did you get for 8b? Uh, what, negative 1 minus x squared to the power of 3 over 2, all divided by 3, uh, plus c. Uh, yeah, that seems correct to me. Uh, right, Joe, did you get that? Yeah, I just put the one third in front. Yeah, no problem. OK, sweet. Uh, that's the answer to that one, so I won't go through that. Very similar processes uh, to the substitution questions. All right, let's move on to question 14. Did you get this in the end, Rigel? I think we were talking about this uh, on last Wednesday. Uh, question 14? And um, maybe not. I think I got, yeah, I, I got this, but um, yeah, I got question 14. It was the very oh, last. Oh, it was the last, sorry, not the last one, the second, the next The second. last of the very thing, question seven. Okay, uh, this one is a bit messy, but it's doable. Excuse me. All right. Um, right, so what did you guys your phone? Oh, do I even want to ask? Is it an absolute mess? Uh, it's pretty long. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your first term? Why don't you write first and see if you're on the right track? 2 7 times x minus 16 yeah. to the power of 7 halves. Okay. All right. So perhaps you can take us through what you did. Uh, you, they tell us in the question, must be this. So that means the first thing I'm going to do before I let Rides to take over is get the derivative of that. And I know that's 1. That's not very helpful. But it does tell me du is equal to dx. All right, what'd you do next, right? All right, well, like it tells you the substitution, so you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, so then you rewrite it with u. Okay, so I've left with an x squared here, the square root of u times, and dx we can place with du, yeah? Yeah. 
And um, if you, since we have that x squared, you want to get rid of it in your top right corner. You have u equals x minus 16. Mm -hmm. Just rewrite that to equal x and plug that in. All right. And when we rewrite it, we get x is equal to u plus 16, don't we? Yep. So there is, this can be written now in terms of just u u plus 16 squared root u times du. All right. This is then, is multipliable, I suppose, mm -hmm. split up. Yeah, uh, um, you can get u to the 5 halves plus 32u to the 3 halves plus 256u to the 1 half. Okay, so you're a bit ahead of me here. I just squared out this bracket, and I need to multiply that by u to the... A half. Add a half to the yeah. So each of these terms now must be multiplied by u to the half, which of course is the square root of u. And that's just a matter of knowing how to deal with uh, multiplying of these powers. So uh, add, isn't it? Uh, u to the 5 over... I still have an integrated. I'm still just preparing myself to integrate. So I'm trying to get a separate terms that I can actually integrate. At the moment, this is a mess. So that times that is uh, 5 over 2 plus 32 u3 over 2, 1 plus a half, plus 256 uh, u to the half, and that's all that's still du. Now I can do each one of these separately. Okay, they're a bit messy, but that's okay. Integrate to this, if I add 1 to the power, I get 7 over 2, and I need to multiply or divide by uh, 7 over 2, which is multiplying by 2 over 7. Uh, same thing works here. Uh, it's going to be uh, u to the 5 over 2. Uh, 32 then is divided by... Uh, divided by... Is it a 5 or a 3? Oh, that's the 3. Sorry. Um, divided by 5 multiplied by 2. So 2 times that is 64 divided by 5. That. Uh, Rigel, I know you were supposed to be doing this, but just correct me if I've done something wrong here. 256, you add 1 to that, 3 over 2, and uh, divide by 2, oh, that's going to be 5, 1, 2, all over, so multiply by 2, divide by 3, like this, plus a constant, and all I need to do is replace the u with what we called it at the start, which is x minus 16, so you can do that. Any questions on that one from uh, you other two? All right, so, like, okay. so I've just replaced the use, and then that is it. It's horrible, but it's correct, I think. Okay. All right, so that's integration by substitution. Um, I think you still need to practice that, but hopefully you're getting the hang of it from watching those examples. Okay. Like are you following this? Is it okay? Or is it a bit fast? Um, it's okay, right. but I don't know if like later I'll be able to go and do it by myself, but obviously I'll just try later. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. I'll talk to you about that in a minute, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta try. Um, Okay, I think we're on to 20, the integration by parts, which we rushed through a bit on on Wednesday. So I'll take it a little bit slower today. Uh, 21G, question 4, A and D, and question 7. Let's get those questions in front of me. Question 4, A and D. Okay. Okay, so this is integration by parts. Question 4, A is x squared e to the negative x dx. So you may notice substitution won't really work here because if we call one, if you call that u for substitution, the one we just did, the derivative of that doesn't give me this. So I can't replace, you know, like that and what we just did. And the derivative of this gives me 2x, which is not e to the minus x. So we can't use substitution. So maybe that's a way of recognizing by parts two different functions multiplying by each other. All right. So, uh, Badai, what did you call u here? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, um, 
yeah, what'd you call you and what'd you call the V dash or D V D? I called Or you D dash. Uh one second. This is twenty one G, yes sir. Twenty one G. Twenty one G, question four. Yeah. Uh let me get a bit messy, but I think I don't think we did solve uh we didn't solve using integration by parts. We didn't? You didn't? Who's we? Um uh, sorry, me and my fr uh, me and my tutor. Uh, okay. How would you solve it? Um if I remember correctly, we used uh hold on. I'm trying to um <laughs> understand uh how you solved it, but I'm not sure uh what the process is called, but it, it looks like it's like direct integration. Direct integration. Can you tell me what your final answer is? Um Negative x squared e negative to the power e to the power of negative x minus two x e to the power of negative x minus two e to the power of negative x plus c. I'm interested to know how you got that true direct integration. Is the answer correct? Yes. So you're going to teach me direct integration. How to do I'm it. trying to understand. We did this like. Uh... It was on a, a Monday, sir. Hold on. I'm trying to remember how I got there. Uh... Right, Joe. Did you get? Did you get what the guy got as his answer? Uh, yeah, I just factored out the e to the negative x. Factored it out? Oh. Well, it was like... A constant? Yeah, I don't know. It just looks neater. It's like e to the, ne e to the negative x times um, like x squared minus 2x minus 2. I don't think you can, you, you factored it out the front. So you, you had this written? Oh, no, 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 this is after. Oh, okay, oh, oh your final sure. answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hold on, one second. Sure. Sorry, Mr. Gibson. Um, yeah, but I, you remembered? Yeah, we did use UV rule. Sorry, it was a very small. Uh, we we did we we're supposed to use quotient rule to de to derive it, right? Quotient rule is differentiation. I mean, product rule, product rule, not quotient rule. No, that's differentiation as well. This is integration. You you use integration. Yeah, but to get parts. the. No. Perhaps perhaps. He figured out a way of doing anti-differentiation. But we need to we need to know the direct method, which is integration by parts. Now you probably did this. I'd say he probably did this or she. All right. Uh, call one u and call the other v dash. So uh, I did dv dx. Sorry, this is the way I used to do it. Um, but dashes seems to be in in fashion now. Um, x squared. I'm going to call u. And v dash, I am going to call uh, e to the negative x. Okay, so I need to differentiate this one and integrate that one. So integrate going that way, and differentiate because remember dash means uh, derivative or d d d u d x in this case. So to differentiate this, we get two x. Integrate this going backwards. Well. Um, that's going to be minus 1 times e to the uh, negative x. So that's minus e to the negative x. 
I'm surprised uh, Badai you had in that little table in the corner somewhere. Perhaps you did. All right. So from our formula book list, um, is this um, the new formula book list? I can't find it. B U U D B. Oh, here it is. Yeah, integration by parts. Uh, it's it's written this way, so um, dv dx, du dx. Yeah, 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 I remember now, sir. Oh, it's all come back. Good, 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 good. Okay. Yeah, so, I remember now. Uh, our formula from the formula book list. We did integration by parts. Ah, that's good. Is u dv, uh, can you see that? Uh, dv dx, which is uh, v dash, is equal to u v minus v uh, du dx, which is u dash. So that's kind of shortened out the one from the, the formula booklet. So we just need to re replace. I've called this u and this v dash over here. Okay, so what does this, so I'm just gonna rewrite that again, e to the minus x dx equals, now I can say that equals u times v minus the integrant of v u dash. So let's look at that. Uh, u, which is x squared up here. I'm just filling in my formula here. Uh, v, pick from this table v, which is negative e, um, negative e. So I'm going to pop the negative in front, e to the negative x. Okay. Minus v, uh, which is uh, same again, negative e to the negative x uh, times, so I just put that in brackets, times u dash, which is 2x uh, dx. Let's tidy this up a little bit because there's a constant here, there's two negatives. So we have negative x squared e to the negative x uh, oh, plus minus minus the plus, and that 2 can pop out here. And that's going to be. Uh, let's put the x first. x e to the negative x and dx. Now there's an issue here. Uh, in the easier ones, so this was uh, one of the trickier ones. In the easier ones, uh, this is integratable straight away. But this is not integratable yet. x e to the negative x. So what I'm going to have to do is do integration by parts again. Hi, sir. Yes. Um, my Twitter, like he gave me, I said I linked a link to an uh, image. He taught yeah. me this formula. He said it's like a lot more like concise or something. And I, I used it for all the other questions and it seems like it was correct. But it's not in the formula booklet. It's just a bit more, it's just a bit rearranged, you know. If you were to. I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's a bit different from the from the one given in the formula booklet, but he said it's a lot more um, like concise. I don't know if that's the right word choice, but uh, it's probably not the right word choice. But uh, if it works for you, go for it. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, it's the same. It's the same formula. Yeah, it's just all plugging in, right? Plugging in values for u, v, and, and the du, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you, you you have to remember that one, whereas this one's in the formula booklet, so you have your choice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I have to do integration by parts again on this because these two are not integratable at this stage. So I once again, I'm going to call something U. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to do the same. I called x squared u in the first one. I'm going to call x u in this one because I know it differentiates to give one, and that's exactly what I want. Uh, v dash is e to the negative x again, and that still in integrates to that. All right, so I have this box again here. This box I'm going to substitute in to this formula again for this bit. The first bit is the same. First bit is the same. 
And now I've got plus two times, and I'm going to put in the all the bits using this same formula. So it's going to be u x uh, times uh, v dash, which is e to the x e to the negative x uh, minus the integrant of v negative e to the negative x times u dash, which is one. And so at last, I don't need to put in one. At last, this I can do this by rule. Awesome. Uh, but sir, isn't there something to take uh, accountable for? Um, like when you derive one of the uh, of the like either u or v it's important that they uh wait is that like you're not stuck in a loop right uh, yeah so if you remember on wednesday i did one of those examples it is important which you choose i yeah. did it two ways i chose the other one and it was a mess uh, it was getting harder instead of easier yeah. right yeah So we can look at that in this question. We can try the wrong one again. You'll notice the wrong one. See, the problem is the wrong one, for instance, if we chose x squared as v and we integrate that, you get x cubed over 3, which has made it harder. And e to the x stays as e to the x. So you've actually just made it harder. So you're trying to make it easier. Yeah. OK. Uh, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, multiply out this and then get the uh, the integral. Uh, sorry, that's a minus, isn't it? That's a minus uh, v. V is minus e to the, so that's going to be a minus there. Uh, so that makes that, multiply that by 2. So let's just rewrite this one again. This is taking a while, isn't it? Integration by parts will take a while. Minus uh, 2x e to the negative x. Now, I'm going to put a plus, uh, well, I can integrate this. It would be plus uh, this, but uh, e to the negative x. So we left with e to the negative x minus again, because these minus minus made a plus, and then we integrate it, you get a minus again. So you get minus 2, the 2 from here, e to the negative x plus c. Okay, so as you can see, it's a complicated and uh, painstaking process integration by parts, especially if you have to do it twice in the one question. So uh, I gave you two of those questions. Uh, the answer to the other one, uh, you can see at the back of the book, and if you need me to do it again, I may, but it seems to be, um, wasn't an issue really for those of you who did it. 2x sine x plus 2 cosine x plus c. That was the answer to the other one. Um, similar thing, I think you have to do it twice again for that one. Uh, but let's do question seven as the final question I'm going to do. So question seven is a bit of a, well, a bit of a, a very tricky one. Uh, it's asked me to integrate uh, sine 4x co cosine x dx okay right so this is once again we know it's integration with parts because it's in that section means i'm going to have to draw my box u u dash oh, not u1 u dash uh so a quick question yeah on an exam on an exam style question uh we're gonna have to know when to apply these right they won't like state to use which rules right uh, if it's an easy question, they may say do it by integration by parts, but if it's one of the harder questions, they won't. Okay, all right. So you have to be able to recognize it. Uh, and the recognition is, this kind of looks like a substitution because the uh, derivative of cosine is sine, but not when it's 4 like this. Uh, and that's uh, the issue here. Anyway, uh, this is in, it says use integration by parts for this one, so you have to do it. 
All right, so which we let equal u. Um, this, you know, the choice is n not great. It's one or the other, and they, neither of them are going to differentiate or, or uh, um, integrate nicely to something easy. So let's just do it as is. Let's just call that uh, u sine 4x. We'll know if we've gone wrong. I call that cosine x. Usually the more uh, complicated one, not, not even usually, sometimes the more complicated one differentiates easier than integrates. Because I know if I integrate this, it's going to be a fraction, and I just don't want that. So integrating it is not a fraction, you know, because uh, di uh, differentiate is not a fraction. Integrating is going to give me a quarter and all that jazz. Wait, um, sir, how do you know cosine x is equal to v dash and not v? Because uh, that's uh, the formula is, and we went over this. You can rewatch the video where the formula came from, and we, we did, I uh, did show you where it came from, even though you didn't need to know. Uh, it, the formula is u, uh, v dash. The first one's called v dash, or the, this is called v dash, and you actually integrate it in the question. So as your, your buddy All right. stated, uh, you integrate it in the formula. You integrate okay, u yeah. kind of separately, and you integrate v in the formula, but you can call that Is that v also dash. why there's dx after the v dash? Right? Why is that dx for here? Dx is for integrating it, right? Dx is just with respect to x. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Why it's there. Okay, but now that I've named them, let's in, uh, go backwards, uh, uh, get the other two. So the uh, integrant of cosine x is sine x. So that's integrating going that way. This way is going to be differentiating. Uh, differentiate this and I get 4 cos 4x. So my instinct told me to go with this one because that's an easier one than having a quarter. All right, so let's use my formula, which is uh, still um, the same as the page. It's u times v minus uh, the integrant of v u dash. Okay, and that's but I need to. So this is still there. Okay, so u is sine 4x. Uh, v is sine x. Minus uh, v, which is sine x still. Uh, u dash, which is 4. Well, let's write it properly. 4 cosine 4x uh, dx. All right, let's get any constants out. It's a good habit to get into. I still have sine 4x sine x here, minus, let's bring that constant out, 4, and I have now sine x cosine 4x dx. All right. I'm, um, is this what you did, Rigel? Um, yes, yeah, I did, but then my u dash just kept on getting more ridiculous mm. each time. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Well, let's let's see. Does anything? So I did mine a bit differently. Yeah. Because the How did you formula do it that I was using didn't. Because the formula that I was using didn't actually require v dash. It was just v. So I only took accountable for u and u dash. Which was why I think. We were using it because it maybe made, maybe it made it more simplified. Are you telling me you didn't integrate v? Uh, no, I integrated v, but um. Are you telling me you didn't get sine x here? Which is the uh, integral, which is the same your formula. No, I did. Yeah, because it's the integrant of cos x is there. It's the exact same formula, but I exactly oh, the same. Okay, okay, okay. Exactly the same. I just do this on the side just so we don't miss out any pieces. Oh, okay. All right. All right. There's no difference. But if you like it better, go with it. No problem. All right. So I have this. Um, once again, lost my train of thought. Uh, so I'm going to do it again. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do it again. There's parts again, and this looks like it is gonna go around in a loopy circle. Let's call you the more difficult one again, cosine four x. I'm gonna get the derivative of u, and the other one I'm gonna work backwards and get the integrant of. Uh, call it v dash. So that's sine x. Get the integrant of that, and that's gonna be minus cosine x. Uh, derivative of this is gonna be minus four sine x. Sine four x. Uh, okay, oh, try this again. So once again, I have to do integration with parts twice. So I'll take, I'll leave the four outside, and I get uh, this comes down here. I won't rewrite it, but uh, uh, minus four times. Okay, u times v. U is uh, cosine four x. Uh, the integrant of v was minus cosine x okay minus the integrant of minus cosine x which was the same thing here and here and minus 4 sine 4x four dx okay and that's just that's just filling in that same formula I didn't rewrite it but I'm filling it in again all right let's multiply out and see what we're left with we still have sine 4x sine x. Uh, I'm going to find all this out as a plus, I think, because that's a plus. Plus 4 uh, cosine 4x cosine x. Uh, plus, well, this 4 will come out times this minus times this 4, and I think we get uh, plus 16. There's a load of minus times this minus times this minus times this minus times this minus is 4 minuses, which is give plus 16. And we leave the rest inside the bracket. Now, this is where I think it just got interesting because I've just noticed something. Right. The question asked us to find, to integrate this. That was the question at the start. Isn't it? That's so, hold on. This was the, yeah. So this is the, Cosine x dx was the question to start. This all equal. Remember I wrote it up here. This all equals all that, and we worked out. And now this equals this. This equals all that. That's what I noticed. So what happens if I bring this and this to the same side? Because I know, as Rigel said, if I keep doing that, I end up in an endless loop of sine and cosine. But if I bring this on to this side, what I really have is minus 15 integrals of sine 4x cosine x dx is minus 15 because that's one of them and there's 16 here is equal to sine 4x sine x plus 4 cosine 4x cosine x and of course I don't want 15 of them I want one of them and I definitely don't want minus 15 of them so I just divide this by 15. So 1 over 15 times all of this, and of course, plus our C. And that is the answer. Ooh. That makes sense. Um, yeah, that's close. <laughs> yeah. I was the same, like I was looking at this going, this is going to go around in circles, but then there was the aha moment. Once you see that the question is there again, and it's a little trick, and that would be maybe a very difficult, uh, a very difficult exam question. But if you you do know that if they give you it in the exam, it must be solvable, must be doable. Um, and this is how. So this is a very difficult integration by parts question to notice that at the end to get. Otherwise, you just keep going. You get a lot of marks for keeping going. If you did it maybe once more, but you should, uh, you need to recognize that things are going around in circles. Okay. Uh, let me just stop the recording there. All right.